This week, we'll be doing a short overview of the founder of the Shitoryu Karate System, Ken Mamabuni Sensei. Mabuni Sensei was born in 1889 in the Shuri province of Okinawa, where he started training karate at the age of 13 under a well-known sensei named Anko Itosu. It is said that Mabuni was so dedicated to his training that he didn't miss a single class from the day he started until he was 20 years old. After this time of focusing on Shurite, the karate style practiced in the Shuri province of Okinawa, he was introduced to Higashiona Sensei by his good friend Chojun Miyagi, who was also the founder of the Goju Ryu style of karate. It was under Higashiona Sensei where Mabuni would learn Nahate, the karate style of the Okinawan province of Naha. It was the teaching of these two renowned sensei that would provide the foundation of the Shitoryu system that our club practices today. Originally, Mabuni wanted to name his system Hankoryu, meaning half hard, in order to reflect the softer movements in Nahate and the more rigid movements of Shurite. However, out of respect for his two sensei, Mabuni opted to combine the first Japanese letters of their names and called his system Shito Ryu. Now, we're all quite familiar with the concept of there being many different styles of karate, and it's not often that we do a lot of cross-training within these styles, but things were different back in Mabuni's day. Mabuni sensei and many other pioneers of modern karate treated all karate as valuable and would spend much of their time training and learning from each other. Mabuni was close friends with men like Jichin Funakoshi, the founder of the Shotokan system, and Chojun Miyagi, who, as I mentioned before, was the creator of Goju Ryu. In fact, it was the collaboration of these men, among others, that would bring karate from the island of Okinawa to mainland Japan. Mabuni Sensei is a fascinating individual in karate history, and he's responsible for so much in our martial art that there's no way I can fit it all into this video. But I want to focus on a few things that we can learn from him, that we can apply not only to our karate, but to every aspect of our lives. The first is, have a hunger to learn. Mabuni Sensei wasn't some grand superstar athlete that had karate figured out from the time he threw his first punch. Actually, it's recorded that he was a weaker child who was often sick in his early years. He started out just like you and I did, with lots of fumbling, frustration, and mistakes. But he had grit, and such a desire to learn that after years of practice he was renowned as the foremost authority of Okinawan kata and bunkai. The second is, have an open mind. Even after he was established as a renowned karateka, he was always moving forward with an open mind, exploring not only different facets of karate, but budo as a whole. It was his willingness to consider new ideas and methods, while still honoring and drawing from his roots, that enabled him to understand karate at a deeper level. He wasn't afraid to exchange ideas and methods with his friends and training partners, and without his open-mindedness, he may never have achieved all that he has for karate. And the third is, trust the process. Mabuni Sensei never viewed the study of karate as something that could be completed. The modern trend of getting your black belt and quitting is completely contrary to the philosophy of karate as an art. Rather, Mabuni viewed karate as a journey that one took not only to understand how to fight, but to understand oneself. Quite poetically, he once said, forget mundane things when paddling for the martial isle. Paddling is joy. So forget the distractions, don't sweat the mistakes, and have fun with the process of learning what you love. Even though Mabuni Sensei passed on almost 70 years ago, we can still continue to learn from him today.